Hi everyone, my name is Amanda from beautifulnursing.com. I know this is a little different from what I usually do, but so many people have been messaging me that they literally are feeling like they are drowning in school right now and struggling so much with like exams and failing out of nursing school and just struggling with how to study effectively. So getting organized is key. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys what I did to get a 4.0 GPA in nursing school, how I studied, how I kept organized. I'm literally gonna go back to my old nursing school and run you through it. I'm gonna show you my nursing notes, my original ones before I made my book. I'm gonna show you everything. I'm gonna show you my hacks, my tips and tricks. So you guys are definitely gonna watch this video, wanna watch this video, and want to share it with your classmates because I think this will really help you guys. All right guys, so this is a sample lecture hall. Um, so usually it used to look like an auditorium and I would sit in the front row just because I used to have a lot of trouble focusing focusing, sorry, in school. So I'd sit in the first row and it would help me again with focus, paying attention, um, being able to hear the teacher. Again, I would have trouble with hearing. So I'd sit in the first row if it was an auditorium style classroom. But since this is um, set up this way, I would sit closer to the professor. So I'd sit on the inside so I could hear better. And I'd also sit facing one of these screens so I could also see what they were doing. So let's just take this first chair here. Make sure you watch this little video here on how I do my Microsoft PowerPoint hack on turning any Microsoft um, PowerPoint presentation or really any presentation into a list of notes. So that way I can have this list of notes available for me in class, turn this PowerPoint into notes, and then I'll show you what I do once I have these notes prepared in class, okay? This is how you're gonna make a PowerPoint into notes. You press file, you go to print. Okay, and as you guys can see, it's just showing me the slides and I want them in notes form. So I'm gonna go under layout right here and I am gonna switch it to outline, okay? And watch this, it's really cool. Look at that, okay? It turned all these like slides into notes. And then you go to the bottom and you can either open and preview or save as PDF, but I'm gonna save it as a PDF, okay? And I'm gonna save it to my desktop, okay? And let's open it. All right, back up a little, <laughs> okay. So this is what it looks like, you guys, after you um, do this little hack and I you know, transformed it from a PowerPoint into notes. So now I don't have the actual PowerPoint, but I have all the information from the PowerPoint that the teacher is gonna, you know, go over in class. So, you know, I'll have all that information in front of me and I can highlight all that information. I can add my own notes. Um, so I would, what I would do with this information here is I would put all of this on my iPad because as I said, I'm a faster typer than I am writer so then I would just copy and paste all this put it into Microsoft Word or pages whatever you use and then um, you know I would just make it into let me show you so hold on what I do is I would just copy over here and then Okay, and then paste it, okay. And then, you know, when I was, before I get to class, you know, I would just make sure to clean it up a little bit. And that way you can too, just fill in your own notes. If you guys notice another thing about my notes, you'll see that at the top, there's like something highlighted in green. 
So each week that we had a new topic, I would highlight the topic of the week in green. Um, so week five was delegation, week six was communication. And this was all for just, you know, the first exam. So at the end of learning these topics for this first exam, I would start a new Word document um, for the next set of topics. That would be an exam two. That way for the final, you know, I could combine all of my um, Word documents together so I could just have all of that information compiled. It would just make it so much easier to study for finals as well, you guys. <laughs> Hey guys, so that's my little PowerPoint hack of how you can turn this into this and eventually into this, you know, and then from here, sometimes I would make, you know, those uh, digital uh, Quizlet flashcards that I could just play in the car on my commute to and from school. So I'd like, you know, make one side say planning and then the other side say policies, procedures and goals, the P's um, for the policies and procedures and then goals would be the lonely G. All right, so now that you got all your notes, what I did for each exam is I condensed them down as I talked about two years ago. Each disorder and medication, I condensed it down into one page that I could study for each exam. So this example that I have here, I have seizures, and I think I go into more detail in a second on osteoporosis. So as you see here, um, this osteoporosis sheet, like I had, like probably 60 pages of a PowerPoint that was summarized into notes. So many pages of notes. And then I summarized all those pages of notes into this one sheet. So it has a section for the patho risk factors, the symptoms, diagnostics, treatments, meds, uh, patient education, all that information. And you can highlight again, um, you know, what you would want to know for the exam um, and so again I would keep this on my iPad that's again why I really liked using an iPad you can also use this on a laptop um, but I really like this you can get these kind of um, medication or disorder organizers for free on my website beautifulnursing.com and they're just really nice as a way to quickly glance at each of these disorders and really um, organize the information because sometimes otherwise if you look at the big information of notes it can get overwhelming otherwise you know looking at this quick page look at all these disorders I have and how I have it organized and it makes it so much easier to like study off of rather than having you know um, you know 300 400 pages of powerpoints and notes this is my binder that I would keep just for paperwork and which I honestly stopped keeping so much paperwork after my first few semesters because I you know got an iPad and it was just so much easier to stay organized I know it's a lot of money um, but it was such a huge investment and it really helped me so this is my dollar store binder um, and I got these tab organizers as well from the dollar store I would usually have two to three classes a semester and I would have the two different classes organized into different tabs. I would usually first start out um, with the syllabus, okay? And I would have all these two different assignments that were due so I could keep track of my assignments. But I, as you guys can see though, I kind of gave up on this method. I started doing an Excel spreadsheet so I could like in real time see what my grade was because I was so anxious. All right guys, so here is my grades in real time um, when I was calculating it out. Um, so as you see, I had my acute, my clinical with it, my patho, and my leadership. Um, so I had three classes going in this one semester and I had to actually switch out this sheet um, for a different one. So that's why I didn't get to finish this one, but I thought it was a really good sample of how it would look like. So you're just going to type your class. So let's say you're in med surge, right? Your points, my points. And then they're out of how many points? Okay. And then you look at your syllabus. 
um, look at all the assignments that you have and you have exam one ETI um, and whatever okay so let's just pretend that's what it is okay and your first exam is out of 40 points your second exam is 40 you know okay so it's gonna be pretty easy okay then you put equals sum right you put sum of this to this and you press enter and it gives you the total of all the points in your semester. As you keep going throughout the semester, you can kind of keep track in real time, time how many points you're getting. So if I got, let's say on my first exam, 35, and then my next exam, I got 30, you can keep track of that by just doing the same thing. So you press equals sum and click, then you keep this press enter and so far so far I have 65 out of 200 all right so then pretend that you're still really nervous and you don't want to keep calculating what your grade percentage is at the moment so all you have to do is you press equals and then you do this number and then divide it by this number and it should give you a percent so right now I'm at 32 percent but it doesn't show us 32%, it says 0.325. So I'm gonna press this percentage up here. So now it's showing me that it's 33%. Watch this, you guys. So it, it just enters it in automatically. So you can keep your grades updated and so you'll know exactly what you need to get to pass in the final. So you guys, I would just keep checking my score, making sure what I needed to do in order to at least pass, you know, so it'd take the pressure off of myself. So like 35 out of 40, if I got 25 out of 40, if I got six, 15 out of 40, right? But I needed 78%. 16 out of 40 is what I would need in order to pass this class. So the next tab, you'll see that there's weekly outlines. Um, so this was actually super helpful. If you have this in your school, make sure to check this out because it gives a little introduction of what you're gonna be learning this week. And if they have an instructor's note section or what the outcomes are for each week, they can turn these into like exam questions and it really, just helps to look at this um and then if you guys notice like look how much reading honestly we had each week i mean it's just that's just ridiculous i i gotta be honest with you guys like the amount of reading each week was just i can't read from medical textbooks i mean I lose focus so quickly. I think they work better than Ambien um, at night. <laughs> if I'm gonna say anything, you guys, get a binder for all your paper material. Get tabs, make tabs for all your um, classes, and then make mini tabs for each week if you are going to print out um, what you know you're gonna learn for each week if you are gonna decide to do that okay, so now my class is usually done at around 9 50 10 so I'm gonna now that I have like my general outline of notes I'm gonna try to clean them up a little bit and also head down to the computer lab uh, before my next class usually that would start around 11 o'clock and I would also make some digital note cards with Quizlet um, so so I could just kind of listen to those also um, on my commute home. I have a 30 minute commute to and from school. Um, so that's just another way that I can study and I can also do that while I work out, um, do dishes, uh, cook, whatever. So I really love that study technique. Um, so I'm gonna go to the computer lab now that I finished my first class. <laughs> Or I'd go to the tutor's office if I was really confused or struggling with the topic of the week. Um, I'd definitely go straight to the tutor because they are so knowledgeable and there's no shame in seeing a tutor like 
so many students went to see a tutor. They are just so great and helpful. So go see one if you are struggling right now, really. Usually right after class, I would need computer access. So I'd go to the open computer lab um, to either clean up my notes, uh, do some kind of quizzes, or even, you know, do homework before the next class ahead. But I usually didn't procrastinate, but, you know, life happens. Um, but if I did clean up my notes or do anything there and needed to print anything, the open computer lab, you know, printing was usually included with the school and, you know, the computer lab was usually very quiet so you could focus really well. Alright guys, time for my second class of the day that includes a lab component. So that'll go from 11 to 1 p.m. By this time, it's 1.30 and I'm starting to get hungry and a little bit tired. So I head out to my car to eat lunch alone. You know, I've been talking to people and around people all day and I just need some time by myself to watch like one Netflix show, eat lunch in silence and peace for like 20 to 30 minutes and just recharge before, you know, finishing the rest of my day, so. All right, so this is about the time that I would go to the gym. Um, I would start doing my v or quizzes, and I would work out for about 30 minutes, get out that excess anxiety or nerves um, that I would have after class and kind of wind down for the day. And most of my cohorts members would meet me here as well. Thank you, bye. All right, so then usually by the end of the day, um, you know, I would come back into the skills lab and I would just practice any skills that, you know, I was struggling with because you guys, I was the worst at skills. Um, so I would practice as much as I possibly could, especially before checkoffs. And then, you know, um, I would also like do my homework at these little tables. Um, so I would do quizzes, I would write papers, um, because you know my iPad was its own little computer so I would just be studying in here doing uh, skills checkoffs in here and it was really great to do it here instead of at home where I can get distracted All right guys, so another question I get asked all the time is like, how many hours do I study? Um, so when I'm at school, I try to study as much as I can. Um, so, you know, in between all the time, if I'm eating lunch, I take that time though to eat lunch. I do not study when I'm eating or watching Netflix. I take that time to watch Netflix. Okay, but when I'm working out, when I am, um, you know, in between classes, um, when I'm on my way to school, like listening to my uh, Quizlet flashcards, I'm studying around the clock. But when I'm home with my daughter, like if you don't have kids or don't have a job after work, like take time to yourself. Like honestly, the time with my daughter is my self care time actually, because she like is such a joy and takes my like mind off things. So um, take time to yourself really after school each day, take a couple hours. And then at night, you know, study for one to two hours. That's what I would usually do. And then I'd always be in bed by 9 30 10. It is hot in here. Whew. So 9 30 10 is when I usually would be in bed and then I'd wake up around five. So yeah. The environment that you're in is crucial. So when we lived in the apartment, unfortunately, like we lived in the apartment that was right in front of basketball courts. So people would play basketball till 10 o'clock at night and I would just have to buy noise canceling headphones. And that's what helped me keep like focus and, you know, cancel out those external noises. A clean environment is a healthy environment. Let me show you guys my environment that I'm in now. I can show you guys a picture of what my desk looked like when I was actually in nursing school, but I'll show you my desk now because I really like it and um, it's very similar to what I had before. So yeah.
can put time limits on your social media apps um, or you know put your phone in a drawer okay so I think I've covered this a little bit already as far as my nursing textbooks because literally we would probably have 100 to 200 pages of reading um, either daily or weekly it was just a lot of reading and only read the first paragraph and last paragraph of each chapter and then the key terms because otherwise it was so much fluff and I swear it took him like 40 pages to describe what urine is like <laughs> I would just recommend figuring out what your like learning style is and you know if you're an auditory learner you know where you like learn by listening so maybe like YouTube lectures podcasts if you um, you know learn by um, visual learner like me uh, YouTube videos looking at drawings um, if you're uh, tactile like hands-on experience which is it's kind of hard in you know nursing school but maybe if you can go to your skills lab um, and kind of learn that way one strategy I really like too is where I would teach back to my teddy bear um, it kind of combined you know tactile auditory um, visual just everything where I was teaching back all these concepts I learned in class and especially the ones that I struggled with it kind of let me talk through them at my own pace um, I remember one that was spinal cord injuries and I you know talked through this with my teddy bear and it really helped me actually learn this material all right guys so here's my clinical folder so when you open it, I used to have like a clinical checklist of everything I needed to bring or do before I left for the morning. Um, here's a picture of it. So I will make one on my website, beautifulnursing.com that you can download and print and put in your clinical folder if you wanna make one like mine, um, just to make sure that you are prepared to each morning. I would have a tab here with my clinical documents, usually like if I needed to do um, a care plan um, or whatever, like expectations. Here is also any prep homework that I had to do for my clinical rotation and group info. So I'm not going to go to it, but I would have um, all the contact numbers of people in my clinical rotation. So if I was running late, um, if there was an emergency or if somebody else in the group was running late and I was worried about them or something, um, which did happen, I would text them and be like, hey, are you still coming? What's going on? Um, you know, and there was somebody that I had to like call because they weren't um, waking up and they were, I texted them and they were like, oh my God, ah! you know and they started running really fast so and got there like five minutes prior so that's good they made it on time um so yeah these are the different tabs that i have here in my clinical folder so one thing i really like to do is just have a clinical bag that was separate from all my stuff so i can just get up and go in the mornings have everything in it set an alarm for everything set an alarm for your clinicals for all your classes all right guys so the key to doing well in nursing school is having a good planner and i really don't care what planner you buy as long as you have one that has a monthly view and a weekly view okay and i want to show you guys some hacks that i did in my own planner that really helped me stay organized and if you don't have this in your own planner i included it in my um, planners that I make these are on my website but if you don't have this put this in your own planner so make a little box and just make a line that says like exams assignments quizzes skills clinicals presentation and I would make um, a highlighting system for all of my different you know things that I had going on for the month that way I could quickly look at the month and see what was going on in school so I could just you know stay organized that way so I could be like oh no I have an exam coming up on the 17th or oh, okay uh, this day you know on the 19th I have a v-sim maternity um, that's due you know 
And um, so that was really important to have a way that I could quickly look at the month schedule and color code them. If you have high anxiety like me or have trouble focusing, it's good to find a planner that has a weekly layout that's hour by hour. That way you can really schedule your like schedule tightly. So you can like say you're gonna do this at this time, this at that time, and you know, you can make sure that you're keeping yourself on track otherwise you know sometimes i would get off track and off focus and i would feel so overwhelmed because in nursing school as you know you have so many things that you usually had to do in a day and this way you can keep track of all the things you had to do look in your syllabus make sure you have all of those due dates down for your assignments you do not want to miss any due dates for your papers quizlets uh, readings, whatever could be due that you have to turn in um, because those can be detrimental to your grade. Um, so make sure you check those out just one more time. So guys, just a little thing, no shame in the mental health game. Like if you need antidepressants to get through nursing school, like that is okay. I needed them myself. I have used antidepressants for as long as I can remember. Um, and I have this cute little tracker, like you can buy it on Amazon. I'll, I can link it to below to like, sorry about my fingers. I, I'm a biter. And, um, <laughs> That just tells you when you took them and it really helps me because I'm always on the go and like it's okay if you need the like if you need meds it's okay like there is no shame in them so yeah no shame in taking meds it's good to do things for your health okay yeah so thank you so much for tuning into this video I hope this helps um yeah I'm tired <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,